Okay, we are going to compare GPT from OpenAI and Dialogflow, which is conversational AI from Google. What's the difference between the two? Uh, do I have to choose between one or the other? Uh, or can I use both? What are the advantages or disadvantages? And the, the best thing we can do to start this uh, debate and explanation is we can just ask uh, chat GPT. So that is a product from OpenAI, a user experience that allows us to interface with the technology GPT. In this case, it's GPT-3. So that is the version of the technology. And uh, we can just ask it, what's the difference between Dialogflow and GPT? And what you'll see here is that chat GPT, the product that we're using, is able to generate a response. It's a fairly intelligent response. It's fast. It reads well. And that's because what GPT is, and what it stands for, is Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. So it's AI, but it is pre-trained. So you can't actually teach GPT new information. You can't feed it information uh, and, and get it to learn from that. It's already been trained on a very large amount of information. Uh, but what you can do is you can fine tune this large language model and you can teach it to recognize patterns and then control what the output would look like. Uh, it'll, uh, it'll generate though the response. So if you're building a chatbot, it's going to uh, take, in a, take in an input, uh, in this case a, a message from a user, uh, and then it is going to output a, a response. Now you don't have full control over that response because it's going to generate the response just like it did here for us when I asked what the difference is between Dialogflow and GPT. But you can fine tune it to help it understand how you would want that, that response formatted. You're helping it complete that task for you. And those tasks, uh, there's a, a number of different tasks from you know, writing a cover letter or writing a blog or a social media post to just you know, answering questions in a, a format that, that works for you. Um, it is still generating the response because it is pre-trained and, and this, is, this is what the technology does. And, and you see a lot of generative technologies generate uh, you where you just input a message and it'll, it can generate an image, it can generate art. Uh, in this case, it's generating text and formatting that text um, using its pre-trained large language model. Dialogflow, on the other hand, you have to train the AI and tell it what it should do when it receives a message. And you do that by creating intents. So if you don't have intents, it's not going to understand the message. And if you do have intents, you can have control over uh, what are the things that you want the AI to understand and how you're going to respond. So you can see here, this is an intent that I created for when people ask about, uh, you know, a, a product, a service or a product. You know, what's the purpose? What do you, what's the purpose of a chatbot? What do you do? And so I have a whole bunch of different things that users might input and I can, you know, uh, get that data from my pre-existing conversations with users and I can add this or I could collaborate with a team and we could all work on a, a, a Google Sheet, just input the things that users might say like FAQ or, or whatever. I want to just populate uh, these tables here with the things that users say and then I can create a response. In fact, because chat GPT is generative, I can even use this to create the things that, you know, the, create synthetic data, like generate things that users might say. Um, so generate NLP training phrases for when users ask about the status of an order. So if your use case is e-commerce, people are going to message a chatbot, where's my order? You know, it's been three weeks, I haven't received it yet. You know, you know all the things that users might say. And you need data uh, because you want, to, you want to input that into Dialogflow. Well, you can actually use 
GPT to do that. So you can see here, it's going to give me a, a list of things, and I could just literally copy and paste these as training phrases for a dialogue flow agent. So while that's generating, it probably do like 10 or so. Uh, let's just jump back to dialogue for a second. So generative AI to generate a response, it gave me 10 things that users might say, and I can just set up an intent in dialogue flow called order status, and I might just put those phrases in here. Or I could use data from my existing conversations or manually input data, you know, add things that users might say. And I'm going to have full control over what the AI agent will do to understand the user's intent. And then if I scroll down, I'm actually creating the response. So I'm not leaving it up to AI to generate the response, which is what uh, GPT does. I'm actually saying this is how I want it to respond, exactly how I want it to respond. And I'll put in text here. So this is a text response. And so if I understand the intent of the, uh, uh, the user, because I've trained the AI to recognize the intent, it will respond with this text. Now I've also, I have another response here where I'm going to redirect the response to ManyChat. And ManyChat being uh, another place where I can create a response. That may, that may be a multi-step response. Maybe it's a response that you know, ask the user to input an email address. Maybe it's a response to uh, write data to a, a Google Sheet. It's an automation workflow builder. So whether I create the response here or I use ManyChat, I have full control over the behavior of what the bot will do when my customer interacts with my business. It gives me much more control. And uh, you can see here that I'm actually going to redirect to a flow. So it's one small snippet of JSON code that you put in with a unique identifier of what that, that flow ID is. And you can get that in the URL of a ManyChat flow. Just load up ManyChat in your browser, go to a flow, and this is the, you know, this is the data that you would want to put in here. And that tells you're training the AI to understand the things that users say and respond with ManyChat. Uh, the other key difference here is that Dialogflow for the majority of users is free. Every time you receive a request or send a request or receive one back from uh, a response back from, uh, from OpenAI, uh, it costs money and that adds up really quickly and it's expensive to begin with. So you have to keep in mind that there's a token system and uh, you're going to be paying uh, for requests uh, for all of this, uh, every time the technology uh, serves your business to generate a response. Okay, so not free, expensive, adds up, free, more control, main difference. Okay, do I have to pick between these two? No, I actually use both, and I'll tell you why. I use Dialogflow because I have more control, but I'll use Generative AI from, uh, you know, from OpenAI, uh, because it makes my experience, my customer experience, more delightful when I simply I can't understand the, the intent. So you have to create all these intents. It takes time. You have to input data. Um, maybe you don't have enough data. Maybe you just don't have enough time. Or maybe you just need to learn how dialogue flow works. You got to read some, you know, content, watch some YouTube videos, take a course, whatever. It's 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 gonna you're gonna take it's gonna take some time to set these up. It does give you more control, but it does take time. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to have all of my intents. I'm not going to understand everything users say. But with GPT, it will, it has, a, it's been trained on a very large amount of data, and it will generate a response that, whether it's correct or not, uh, is, you know, is subject to debate. It, it, it may be somewhat correct. Uh, but it certainly will read well, and it'll keep your user engaged. And as you feed it data to, to fine-tune the model, you can tell it what the, the behavior should be, even though it's writing the response on your behalf. Now, how would I set this up, this sort of system where I can use both uh, with ManyChat? So every message that gets sent to a ManyChat bot, I don't use keyword rules at all. What I'll do is I'll use my default reply in ManyChat, and every time a message uh, is received by the, the chatbot, it gets processed with Dialogflow. And um, 
it's going to get relayed to Dialogflow. Actually, in this is this app is what I'm using, but you can use an external request and a whole bunch of different ways to connect to Dialogflow to relay your messages. Uh, and and then once it's relayed to Dialogflow, it's going to try and trigger one of these intents. Now, if it, if it does hit an intent, if the message triggers an intent, an intent because we train Dialogflow to understand that intent or the intent of the user, we can reply with a ManyChat flow. Now, if we don't understand the intent of the user, because <coughs> maybe the user sends a message um, it just doesn't make sense, or we just we just haven't trained the dialogue flow agent to understand it. Dialogue flow has what's called as a default fallback. So that message will hit this fallback. And you can see here that when it hits this intent, I'm also replying with the flow. So what I'm doing is I've set up this flow here. So dialogue flow will respond with this many chat flow, and at this point, I'm gonna make a request. It's an external request. Uh, you can make this request by posting to a, a, a URL and it'll relay the message to uh, GPT and it'll generate a response. I'm not going to go into the details here how to do that. There's a lot of free content and tutorials on online on how to uh, easily relay uh, data, message data to GPT and then what it'll do is you'll get back a response. That response gets stored in a custom user field here, and then you'll just display uh, the message for the user. So it's the best of both. One is free, so let's try and understand the user's intent with our, our free product here, Dialogflow. And if we can't, you know, let's then uh, relay that message to GPT and let's give the user a, a let let the technology generate a response for the user, and that keeps them engaged. And you may want to at this point not only generate a response, but then you know take them into a menu of you know here are some things that I can help you with immediately. So you can create an additional step after this. You have more control uh, uh, in terms of wh where the user flows in your conversation. So I hope that helps clarify the difference between dialogue flow and uh, GPT and uh, why you might want to consider using both together uh, as opposed to just you know relaying every message and letting technology interact with your business. Uh, you have control uh, at the end of the day as to uh, how, how your, your automated conversational experience should behave when it receives a message because you can actually create the response. Okay, take care.